We are live. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. Alhamdulillah wa salatu salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi salim tasimu kathira. Welcome everybody to today's session with Faith Essentials, sponsored by Faith Essentials, alhamdulillah, with Sheikh Abu Isa Ni'matullah. I am Ammar al-Shukri. We're very excited to be with you wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, inshallah ta'ala. We'll be talking about a really, really important topic on simply how to study Islam. But without further ado, I got the big easy with me also known as alternative entertainment also known as your favorite sheikh's favorite sheikh sheikh abu isa ni'matullah assalamu alaikum sheikh if only if only <laughs> i was every sheikh's favorite sheikh <laughs> to be honest you know what they say they say that i am that guy by the way they you know what I'm saying? on the low on the, on the low. low on the low but they don't want to make that kind of thing public because you know what i mean <laughs> people exactly. don't want to be pe people don't want to be cancelled you know what i mean people it's about self-preservation out there right Absolutely. And we're going to talk about that, you know, how, how to study Islam. One of the big topics is how to how to pick a sheikh, right? Who do who do you who do you learn from? So so sheikh, you are uh, I guess we're going to get right into it. Obviously, we're 20 minutes past the hour. We wanted to get a head start on everything. We're not going to do the, you know, where's everybody from and all of the type of stuff way we normally start. I don't mind life. not doing that because that's the world's most craziest, irritating Hafsa thing anyway. But are we not even <laughs> going to blame Hafsa for starting late 20 minutes either? We should. We I, think it's only I think it's only appropriate, Chef. Because, I, I am mean, literally still here and I have all of the controls. Uh, <laughs> end this. We can end this whole charade. Anyways. Inshallah. <laughs> Sheikh, you know, um, I, I'm sure you get this question a lot. I get this question a lot. I just want to paint this seed. You know, uh, you've got your, your young Muslim or your person who's who's young in their in their journey of seeking knowledge they're just starting out and they go on youtube and they start watching you know somebody who's recommended or you, youtube's algorithm recommends it to them and they watch one video that's really entertaining they watch another video and they might even get you know certain spiritual highs to get a fix but overall a, a year two years three years go by they actually haven't really built their knowledge base at all um, they might start practicing. They, they've got a lot of gaps in their knowledge. Um, and they really don't know what to do to actually go from A, forget from A to Z, from A to B or B to C or C to D. And so I wanted to just begin with you and, and, and maybe get a little bit of, of, of you know, your, your sensibilities with regards to how a person should go about going from that first starting point A to B. And I know that you you know, you've got a, a really beautiful story as far as, you know, all of the places you've traveled to seeking knowledge. We're not talking about necessarily people having to go overseas anymore, but just, you know, the, the commitment that's required. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. Zakamullah um, Shaykh Ammar. Listen, I mean, this topic from the offset kind of feels like, you know, might even come across as a boring topic or oh, that issue again. Um, and you know, it's not exactly the most exciting end of times or divorce and marriage or God knows what it is that people, you know, really look or online social media wars or whatever it is because that's happening these days. Um, but realistically, there's few things as important as this um, because so many people have great intentions. So many people are affected by something emotionally or spiritually and then they realize the obvious thing that they have to seek knowledge, they have to improve and increase on what they know. Um, and that's, by the way, we need to make that clear because some people are quite, you know, happy. They say, you know, that the Western concept of ignorance is bliss is not an Islamic concept. However, it's followed by many, 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 many Muslims. So much so that it's almost as if they are supporting this as well, as if it's, as if ignorance is bliss. And ignorance is never bliss. Ignorance might save a person in a extreme situation where we don't need to speak about but uh, otherwise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very very clear that the people who know and the people who don't know are, the, are not the same and therefore it has to be an absolute priority for everybody to improve their their state and you will also know what your status with Allah is because if you are studying if you are learning and it's benefiting you and it's benefiting your position and your stability and the way that you see things and life and you're able to help yourself and your family and others, then you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supporting you right at that moment. 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man yuridillahu bin khayra, yufaqihu fi deen. Whoever Allah wishes good for, then he gives him understanding in this religion. Meaning that if you are studying and it's leading to um, positive development and growth and not confusion, not fitna, not the, the rest of the negative kind of attributes and, and characteristics that we know, then you know it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for you. And that's a good uh, yardstick to use. Because lots of people are consuming so much. I mean, this is the era of consumption. Yep. Yep. The greatest irony that we've seen is that never, ever has there been. And I mean, it can only obviously get more. But even right now, there's way too much knowledge out there. There's way too much sources that have been transcribed or that have been put into, tra translated, that have been retaught. The AI uh, 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 chat GPT's technology is working overdrive at the moment. Every institution and organization is using it to transcribe thousands of old, old audios and videos. I mean, it's an unprecedented, an unprecedented time of the accessibility to knowledge, and yet we've never been so ignorant. It's the great irony, which means and, and proves to anybody that's listening to this, if they don't think this is a relevant uh, session for them or this subject is not relevant, that clearly there's a massive mistake. There's a, a massive disconnect between the accessibility to knowledge and doing it right. And uh, uh, look, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't prescribe, and that's important, there are a few of these things in our Islam in which Allah does not describe the uh, prescribe the method. And by mm -hmm. that, I mean insist that it has to be done a very specific certain way. And that's in his wisdom and it's in our mercy because if he did, subhana, then we would have to then, for example, do like what you said, which is just, just go back 20, 30 years to my era. That's yeah. not possible actually today, let alone going back 300 years, let, let alone going back 1300 years to how they would travel and what they would sacrifice and what they would do to study. And this is from Allah's mercy. The same as tarbiyah is not prescribed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one specific way, but whatever works. The same as da'wah is obligating us to do it the, the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam, but maybe through our own political moves and through our own work colleagues and not having to go around smashing idols, for example. This is a mercy from Allah and it's something we should be obviously grateful for, but also we should be very cautious about because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that responsibility for you to get it done by not prescribing, that's what he's saying to you. He goes, okay, then, well, I'm not going to then tell you that the exact way that you need to do it. I'll make it clear it's an obligation. Talab al-ilm farid is not ala kulli muslim. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that to seek knowledge is an absolute obligation upon every muslim. So he said that. He goes, as for how to do it, I'm going to let you use your resources. Some will have scholars. Some will have the internet. Some will have courses. Some will have YouTube. Some will have this, that. And What's required is for us, teachers, the scholars, the institutions, to lay out a framework for people. And in fairness, they've been doing that for years. And so why have the people not been accessing that? Or why are the people ending up more confused than ever? Why are the people wasting hours upon hours in complete, uh, whether it's debating or just consuming the entertainment industry that's built off the back of you know, a new video cast or a vlog or whatever that so-and-so said this and so-and-so said that, where there is zero learning going on. Now, it would be okay if it was zero learning and therefore you are just at zero. But it's not. Actually, it's either uh, getting involved in a ghiba or it's getting involved in buhtan or it's involved getting involved in some other gossip or it's getting involved in some other kind of nonsense. The amount of uh, time that's spent versus the amount that's actually gained is pitiful. And so therefore... I think this is just the introduction. I think that you'll kind of maybe develop this, but I think it's very important for us to be self-aware of the problem that we have caused for ourselves. Clearly, the system is there for us to become great scholars. If we had the discipline, it's not even the issue of ability. If you have the ability to go and study and take degrees, you have the ability to become a professional in whatever science, then you have the ability to study Islam at the highest level. It's simple as that. What's the next thing is resources. And if the resources now, are so, so plentiful, so, so available with so many different, you know, types and flavors and stripes. You don't like this kind of country, we'll give you someone else from another country. You don't like this madhab, we'll give you a different madhab. So yeah. the availability, accessibility is all there, but people are not willing, and this is the, the truth, people are not willing themselves to discipline to themselves to a system. The, the desire and the love to want to go here and go there to the headline, to the excitement, to the X or the Y, and not do the 
sometimes boring, laborious, methodical way is at the root of this problem. And that's why when you think about something like uh, Al-Maghrib or Faith Essentials or the other programs and institutions that offer programs, one of the great things that they have done when they do it is to try to turn the boring methodical into itself something which is relaxed and you can, you know, easy viewing, easy yep. on the eye, easy on the ear. And if that exists and it does, then I fear for the people in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because if you were to say that, yeah, that old guy spoke in a way that I couldn't even understand, he didn't, he spoke with okay. a heavy accent, didn't, whatever, couldn't access it at all, never was able to, yeah, Allah, you know the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell them, no, we do know the truth. And there were people out there that were offering it to you in a system, in a manner that you didn't take advantage of, but rather you're more interested in YouTube vod, vod, uh, vlogs and uh, TikTok and whatever it is. You know, uh, Sheikh, the... That leads me to what I had wanted to lead into actually perfectly, which was I wanted to begin in, in this session, whatever, however briefly we have, I just wanted to, to kind of give a, a, a gentle roadmap from, you know, some of what our illustrious scholars who have written on this topic so much have shared. And obviously, the first begins with internal attributes for a person, sincerity. And maybe if we have time, talk a little bit about the importance of taqwa. And, and humility and these really, really important attributes that a person has to have before they go on the journey. And when you mentioned this issue of not wanting to go down the laborious route, that to me is a reflection of sincerity because if a person is sincere, want, sincerely wanting to get to a destination, if, if they truly trust the person who's giving them directions, then they're going to go in that direction if they truly want to get to where that person, where that, where that, where that destination is. And so if we could talk about what sincerity is when a person is seeking knowledge, what does it look like? Does a person gain knowledge because they sincerely want to help others? Or do they gain knowledge sincerely because they want to benefit themselves? You have the statement of Imam Malik who said, I learned knowledge for myself. And that's the way that my generation and the people of Medina were before. Or you have Imam Ahmed said that a, a true intention in seeking knowledge is to, to want to raise ignorance from yourself and from others. But that addition of others here, does that allow, would you advise for a person to, to, to learn for the purpose of being, you know, wanting to be a, a da'ya, wanting to benefit their community? My community is ignorant. Or would you prefer that that person restricted to just benefiting themselves? So it is, it's actually a lot more difficult, the question that you ask, than, you, than a person might realize. And the reason I say that is because, you see, you alluded to it. You said our illustrious scholars, you know, you mentioned the, the, the big imams, the big imams of the Salaf and the like, and, and their kind of grand statements on these issues of what knowledge is learned for and, and what it is and, and, and the like. I don't know. I, I, I have to say that I think that what is... I think that what we need to do is to be brave enough, and I mean as teachers, to tell people some home truths, mm. right? Um, and that might mean breaking from the mold of the Salaf. It might mean, you know, getting what people might say real talk, right? Yeah. Um, like, like today, if people are uh, thinking that, that um, yeah, because... Obviously, a lot of people, when they start off, it's normally after some kind of uh, conversion, a spiritual moment, an emotional moment that's made them realize how ignorant they are, or has made them realize, for example, that they have a gift for themselves to learn and others maybe listen to them. But something has set it off. And at that moment, they're at their most sincerest. They're yeah. because, because nobody knows them and nobody's really interested. And so the other, and sincerity really doesn't come into it when there's nobody else involved. If you yourself are alone, then you don't need to worry about sincerity. Sincerity is only a concept that exists in the presence of other people. And this is why the most sincere prayer that a person can pray is the hajjid, nobody knows, nobody's around, whatever. So for people who will get confused by sincerity, and sincerity can be studied for weeks, by the way, it's that big a subject. It can also be studied in, in 10 seconds. And that's all you need to know. That when you're at the beginning and nobody's there and nobody knows about what you're about to do, you are at your most sincere. And then as you start to develop and you start to learn, the other people get pulled in. How do they get pulled in? They get pulled in because you soon realize they don't know what you know. Then you start to then go to a different level where you are clearly developing skills and other people have indicated that where you can affect and impact 
other people and that brings power and power is where other people are brought in whether you like it or not and so there's no doubt that the the and this is not something which is intrinsic to islam and this is the point i want to make that if you want to be famous today and a lot of people do want to do that and they do want to be on the youtubes or whatever whatnot listen there are a hundred ways better to do that than to go into studying knowledge and and being a teacher and a scholar and I also so from a, say from a profession point of view, if you're also thinking this is going to support you as well, then I think you need to also think again. The future does not necessarily suggest, as for the last whatever years, that this is some kind of high-paying profession that a person can support themselves through. The reason I want to get that those those big statements in first is to just basically say that I don't even think that you should be letting the intention issue come in and affect you if you realize that I'm not going to become famous as a result of this, or I'm not going to have the impact uh, that, that that on other people as, as I'm expecting, because unfortunately it is the biggest devil uh, or the biggest fitna or the biggest uh, desire that affects the student. They don't have the patience to keep themselves undercover and carry on studying. And they fool themselves with the idea. And this is the dangerous statement I was making fool themselves with the idea that they have to spread knowledge. And then a person will say, what do you mean? Prophet ﷺ said, that spread from me even walau, walau aya, even one verse, tell the people. And the Prophet ﷺ cursed the one who conceals knowledge. And that brother, he's not talking about you. Wallah, just sit down. Yeah, he's not talking about you. You ain't concealing anything. All right, you're not concealing one single thing, brother. I stand in front of Allah and I'll say, this guy didn't conceal anything from anybody. Right? <laughs> the, 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 uh, we make ourselves believe that we are the Ibn Taymiyyahs of our time, that we've got so much to share. People need to calm down, sit down and consolidate, right? Realize that this is not about following old school methods or that, you know, that everybody's got to be, you know, uh, go through the whole mill for forever and ever. And of course, I know that the more that a person teaches, it also helps to revise their own work. But I think these uh, kalimat al haq uh, completely uh, have messed up this situation. That all of these are true individually. That there's no doubt that we should spread doubt. There's no hold doubt. On, we, hold on, Sheikh. I have I have a knack, and I, I, you can't just drop bars like that and then not me translate. So kalimat al haq a statement of truth that uh, he he's quoting a line by Ali ibn Abi Talib and he's just he's just moving on because it's you know he, logical progression this is basic stuff but over here this is a big stuff okay so it, it basically means that this is a statement of truth through which falsehood is intended it's a beautiful beautiful statement because sometimes you might you know if if the Khawadij had tweeted in al hukmu illa lillah that it's you know uh the rule judgment is only for a lot would have gotten 150,000 retweets people would have shared it because it's a statement of truth but it's not just about the statement of truth it's about what is intended behind the truth so a person has to be very smart with regards to what is behind what is being said what is the motivation behind being given what is said what are the consequences of what's being said so that's a, a big big thing that the sheikh just dropped in one line because he's used to doing that stuff jazakallah khair keep going so and I think that that what we need to say to ourselves is that the the idea and the the uh, the desire, the desire to want to keep telling people these tidbits that we've heard and that we've seen, and especially when it's been made so easy to do that, you can just be reading and come across something and you think, you know what, let me share that, you know, you want to, let me let me, and it's not a million miles removed. Now here's the irony. You think that that's something which is so important and so great. And I'm sure that there's people that, that are in the right place in the right time doing that kind of thing. But we're talking about people who are serious about their study. Is the same kind of like uh, uh, pity is the word. The mm. pity that you that that I would have for such a person as doing that is the same pity that you see on Instagram this person that would be mapping out their morning prayer routine or mapping out their their you know wearing their clothes routine and whatever these people for them a normative practice has got to be shared for the other people and they are not bringing anything world changing they're not they're not changing nothing whatsoever other than self promotion or other ulter ulterior motives promotion or financial or x or y or z and uh, uh, here's the thing person would look at that and look down upon that and say, yeah, that's so embarrassing, you know, this hijabi so-and-so or this guy who's doing the cooking or whatever, whatnot, and not think about the way that this guy's meant to be studying and every every three seconds he's sharing a clip of himself doing this or herself sending that. That's, I think, where we need to reset. The 
the true things that we know that, yes, the Prophet ﷺ said that we must do with knowledge, but them thinking that it applies to them. And that comes from a teacher. And that ultimately comes from a teacher. And this moment right now is what we don't have. We have, so, we have teaching without faces, without personalities, without character. We just have no accountability to the videos that we're watching and consuming. No accountability to all the clips that are coming in straight in. We're accepting it as truth. And this is such a treachery to our source and our methodology. That's the real problem. Beautiful, Sheikh. I agree 100%. You know, you, you mentioned self-promotion and how problematic that becomes. And I just want to, and you mentioned the teacher, you know, this this past weekend. I was teaching at a Maghrib seminar and, you know, a wonderful brother, young brother, beautiful reciter, beautiful reciter, maybe 19 years old, handsome, all of that type of stuff. He comes up to me and he shows me his face on a flyer uh, and he's 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 on a flyer with some big shot bodies in the U.S., like big shot Quran night. And he's on the flyer, too. So then he showed me a text from his sheikh telling him, get your face off that flyer right now and uh don't even go to that event it's going to cause you problems and what have you and so i when i saw when i asked him who had sent him that text he told me the, the name of his his sheikh and his murabi and i said then then why are you asking me he's like oh you know sure i was like if, <laughs> i'm like i'm just visiting bro if this is the guy who's day in and day out with you he tells you get your face off that flyer get your face off that flyer and so that accountability is super important and just having somebody who can keep you in check because it, it can be destructive 100%. And I, I, I have a way, Sheikh, that I encourage people to resolve this, this problem of wanting to communicate from the Prophet Sallallahu even if it's a single verse, while still keeping your head down. And I want to see if you, 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 you agree. And that is, you don't have to promote yourself. You can, you can, if you have that energy for da'wah, you can promote people who are qualified. You don't have to be the person to translate. And one of my favorite projects currently is a Quran channel called Naqat Studios. I'm a little biased because it's coming out of Sudan, but it's a bunch of young kids with some high quality cameras and high quality media. And they said, you know what? We get Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi who comes to Sudan and we had, you know, Sheikh Nurair Rahimahullah. And it's their channel that popularized these recitations. And, you know, today's kid would just sit down and kind of start reciting with those talents and they'd create their own channels and, you know, with all of their mistakes and all of their, and instead they said, you know what, we're just going to create a platform for these monster reciters that we locally have that was spreading. People are benefiting and they're completely anonymous. Unless you go there, you don't know who they are. So that what projects like that, Sheikh, what would you say for 1920? I think that's great. I think I think that's great. You see, I want to I, I want to, uh, you know, say on the example of the of the lad that was on the flyer. One of the problems that we have is that um, there is no shortage of the Murabbin and scholars that will correct a person like he showed. So that's clearly not the problem. Mm. The problem is, is that he still thought that, yeah, you know what? He probably is, you know, too harsh, not right, could be wrong. You know, you might have said it in a nice way, Shura, but the, the, what's the reality behind that statement, Shura, is that he himself was not ready to completely, yani, saman wa ta'a, just accept it, right? It wasn't just about listen and obey, which is what you should be doing to a teacher. The truth is, is that the era that we're in and the accessibility to the knowledge that we have has breeded a level of ignorance where we feel that it truly is me, myself, and I, that I have that ability. I can you know, if I don't like you, if you don't, not my flavor of the month, and I go to anybody else, any other source, you're not someone who's exclusive. And this, as I said, is a battle against ourselves. Now, I don't this want to... is when knowledge becomes transactional, not sacred. Uh, 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 that's the problem, right? That's the awesome problem. And that's why even in, because the knowledge has become transactional, I want people to think that also from a, a, even the Dawa project point of view, depending upon what you see as your role and you know what seeking knowledge is obligatory but not to become a scholar is obligatory and so some people might see their 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 calling in being that person you know in being that person who organizes mass events for other people and sometimes you know and obviously as a as a percentage these people are very few but they also get affected by the fitna when their whole channel becomes so big or, or their big or, or their account becomes so big or their conference gets so big and then they start doing things which a lot of the community didn't become aware of, which might as well have just been an individual anyway. And so 
intentions will, as I said, always be affected when others are involved and they're impressed with what you're doing. And that shouldn't be our concern, whether that's allowed or not allowed. Our concern is, are you willing to put in the hard work to be deserving of where you are? That's what needs to be said. I remember, I'll give you an example about Umar Suleiman. All right. Yeah. I remember Umar Suleiman, uh, Sheikh Umar Suleiman, and he really is. And obviously he's younger than me. It's difficult when someone's younger, they keep remember, remembering to call him Sheikh. And I remember a while ago, we're talking years ago, when uh, the Al-Maghrib uh, uh, guys spoke to me about Sheikh Umar. And uh, I didn't know who he was. And it was an idea of, listen, this, this guy, he's really something. And um, we need to consider him to be an instructor and so on. I, so this could be 10 years even. I, I don't know the, the years. I'm not good at years. But it was a long time ago. And I was like, how old? Right. And he was really young then. Right. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, there's all these videos, this, that, whatever. Check it out. And my 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 my, my uh, red flags were all over the place. Like, you know, this young and all this kind of, you know, whatever. Content. And, yeah, yeah. Content. And this, that, this doesn't make any sense. Doesn't fit the, the methodology, blah, 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 blah. And I'm giving this example to show to people that there is no absolutes in this system. Right. Mm. What I soon realized, and so I was like, you know, be cautious, don't go, no, no, no. And as usual, I got voted by everybody else, right? So, yeah. you know, and they were like, no, 100%, trust me, this guy's the, the legit, the, the whatever. So I said, all right, you guys know best, but I don't think that this is right. I need time, blah, blah, blah. The, the proof is in the pudding, bro. Mm. Okay? The proof is in the pudding. It didn't take me not long at all afterwards to realize that he was proper talib al mm. and that this is a person that's put in the hard yards. He's put yeah. in memorization. He's put in the 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 the, the, the work that's required to have principled uh, concepts, ideas. Throw him into any scenario. This is how you can tell, yeah, and what's well, who's real or not. Throw yeah. him into any scenario, and he'll hold Islam down, right? He'll hold Islam. That doesn't mean he doesn't make mistakes or doesn't have some issues or whatever, whatnot. Yeah, and he's not yeah. the prophet, all right. So yeah. put him into with kids. He will deal with that, put him in front of non-Muslim, put him in front of Christians, put him in front of atheists, put him in front of a Muslim crowd, put him in front of the, whatever it is. He's able to speak on all subjects protecting Islam. It's the, the Sharia. And it shows that the hype was actually real and he deserves to be where he is. And he will. And we need people like that. And people shouldn't be looking at that and saying to themselves, this justifies clearly that kind of methodology. No, it justifies yeah. if you have that ability and you've done the work when your parents were teaching you when you were a young nipper, when your family were making sure that you were memorizing and you were part of the masjid when you were that young and you've been coming up all of your life studying and studying and studying, then at 19 and 20 will let you out onto the onto the scene. Absolutely. This is not about holding people down. And that's an accusation which is sent against us. You know, they want to they want to take it all. They want to keep it all to themselves. They don't want to spread it out to the rest old of the guard. Country. Yeah, the old guard and that they, you know, they've got they've got their own complexes and this insecurities and perfectly there's no insecurities at all. We are tired. We are uh, uh creaking we want any you know, fresh blood but that blood has to be pure. That blood has to be sacred. That had, Those people need to understand the brief. They need to understand the responsibility. And so we bring it right back down. Then obviously I've gone quite far away to advanced study, but it starts with being patient, following a system methodology, right? And again, as I, as I said before, that's what a teacher gives you. The teacher is there to tell you what you need, not what you want. Mm. And that's the problem because it's all about me, myself, and I in this moment. We just want, 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 not what we need. We need, we need, we need. Then your teacher knows you. This is whether the parent, whether the teacher, whether the murabbi, whether the senior scholar. So many times people are not happy with what they uh, are told. Like, take my name off the fly. You think I bloody made it. Ten all my life to get there. And now I've got to get rid of my thing in my one time, one shot, whatever. I could have got married off this, any one event. And now you're taking my name off it. You're taking me out of this. You don't, you, you, you always feel that, Everyone's against you. We're just making sure that you don't follow, you don't fall into a really, really bad moment, that you don't crash like so many before have crashed, that you don't turn into those deviant folks that have led people out of, you know, away because their their principles were not were not solid. I could go on the subject for years, but you better keep me under. I mean, we could. I mean, this. I, I feel like this could be a, a for sure one of those three hour podcasts, and maybe we need to do that, inshallah ta'ala, because. Fleshing this out is important and it should be fleshed out in one place. Um, so, so maybe Sheikh will, will take a, another date from you, inshallah ta'ala. But from now, 
for now, I want to I want to skip from the the internal and and move to the process. Right now, we have we have Faith Essentials. We've created this portal. It's got over thirty courses. You are one of the most um, what's the word? You have the most courses on Faith Essentials, or you, or you have the second most taught courses at Faith Essentials. I'm being corrected right now, but. Um, it's between you and Sheikh Walid. So either way, I need two of our, our most senior instructors, mashallah, have invested the amount of, amount of time in the system. So if you could speak about uh, the importance of just a teacher, you talked about a teacher right now, but the importance of teachers. So when a person goes onto YouTube and TikTok and all these places, which, which is basically where people are getting information now, you know, sometimes people will forward me uh, information for a video and they'll say, is this true? And I'll be looking at them. And my first question is, where did you even come across this sheikh? Like, who is this person? Or I know the sheikh, and I'm surprised that somehow this person ended up on your feed because it's it's just it's not that type of person. But the algorithm is can be so broad, and a person's uh, reach can be so large that even if they're not necessarily appropriate for that person, that's the person who they're receiving information from. So I feel like when you when you when you when you when you come to faith essentials or you come to a maghrib in general. At the very least, you can trust that these people obviously are, have been vetted by the institution. They are presenting on topics that the institution is behind them teaching. There's some sort of qualification. And so the importance of, of approaching and being very careful, Sheikh, with regards to who you take your knowledge from. Yeah, and I think that that uh, another mistake that folks make is that they believe that there has to always be a... Uh, or that they think that we're talking about having to sit at the feet of somebody and the like, you know, this kind of classical uh, idea. And of course, that's the gold standard to be in the presence of a teacher in a live kind of uh, session. Um, and that's that's an important reminder for all of us that even though uh, after COVID or during COVID and then after COVID, the online scene kind of exploded, it was there from before. It was never meant to replace actual circles and your actual presence in a masjid and your actual interactions with the imams and scholars and teachers, male or female. But obviously it served a, a big adjunct. adjunct. Now, uh, 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 as we move out of uh, COVID, um, I do think that we haven't moved out of COVID online mindset as much as we should have. Just like mm -hmm. how uh, people and I don't want to rubbish the online at all no not at all but I just do think that people do need to appreciate the importance of the live scene however saying that to be um, kept disciplined is more than just someone you know checking your knowledge with you it's about trust as you said it's about vetting it's about knowing that the person that is in front of you is not someone who's the teaching for the you know for the clips or for the for the likes or for the channel and unfortunately, if you have and 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 th th this, if this means throwing a number of teachers under the bus, then so be it. If we have teachers who are not teaching formally, whether through an institution, whether through online regular classes, or whether in person, but what the majority or all or the majority of their output is just recording videos and so on and so forth, then these are the people to avoid like the plague. Yeah, there's no message, nothing, just. The, 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 this 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 needs to be understood from a deeper level these folks are not actually interested in your development they're just interested in answering questions and that answer is predicated upon huge amount of methodology and concept and principles and trust and the ability to be able to assess uh, assess evidences sources and reality the hadith that i mentioned to folks earlier on about the one whom Allah wants good for, you fucking who fit deen. It doesn't say you fucking who fee al Quran or you fucking who fee ilm al hadith. Allah will, will, will give him an understanding of deen, and deen in, in our uh, context is life, right? You have to understand everything when it comes with knowledge, all of the corollary parts as well. So you need to understand politics, you need to understand a person's ethnicity, you need to understand a person's birth age, birthplace, their influences. And that's what you get when you know that the person is accessible to people, accountable in front of the people, teaching the people, and then they have a video that's that's elsewhere. But the way that we have right now, you have just dedicated channels and clips and people who do nothing but that, and they don't have a, a, a culture of study or 
if they have studied and learned, they don't teach the people to allow that knowledge to come in a manner which doesn't then lead to the confusion where then the person watches that and then puts it out and then they've been corrected by everybody else saying, you realize that there are other opinions on this matter. You realize that this is actually incorrect. Or send it to Sheikh Ahmad and say, what, what, what's this guy saying? You don't get that then because that person is accessible elsewhere. That person is accessible maybe within the platform. That person knows the responsibility of this clip that is part and wider part of a bigger project or a bigger parcel. So I think this is really important to understand because now we're in the era of nothing but clips and, and channels, which, as I said, are, are run by people that don't do anything else but that. And so I think that when you do see folks like Al Maghrib or whoever that have a system, you know that all of them are teaching regularly, every single week, real people, accessible in front of the people, accountable in front of the people, that they are teaching methodology, that they are making sure that you don't just believe that, for example, faith essentials is the be all and end all, but no, rather that this is part and parcel of a methodology which takes a person, gives them good, solid knowledge in all of the key areas that they will need from Islam and Mu'amalat and Mu'ashara, everything that's required to get along with other people in their business manner, in the social manner, in relationships, in terms of fundamentals of aqidah, in terms of the fundamentals of fiqh, all of the various areas of fiqh, the concept of spirituality taking care of the heart, being aware of what's happening in terms of life coming and the, the end of times and the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the afterlife, to be able to give a framework that's part and parcel of these instructors' general teachings as well. They're all accessible. They're there to, to be held accountable in the more detailed and more in-depth for those folks that don't have the time for that just yet, or maybe even doing that concurrently, this is done at the same time. I think that is a ethic that needs to enter into the hearts and minds of all the people who are watching this. All of our students need to be aware of this and the danger of taking content from these even well-known voices that are not accountable to the actual scholarliness, actual knowledge. You know, Sheikh, as someone who, who has a lot of clips myself, I realized early on everything that you just talked about as far as how there's so much that actually goes into answering somebody. Very quickly, I realized that these clips cannot be, they're not intended for a global audience. At the end of the day, I'm talking about, I'm talking to a very, very particular experience. I'm talking to an American experience. I'm talking to, it doesn't apply so much to the people in the UK. It definitely doesn't apply to the Nigerians who, who love to, you know, watch. You might, you might enjoy the content for sure. You might benefit for sure. But it's it's very, very difficult to speak to a global audience in one minute. It's very, very difficult, especially when you're talking about Islam, unless you're just quoting an ayah, basically, maybe, and you're just mentioning, you know, one or one or two points. Um, it, it's it's almost... very difficult because you fear Allah and you know the responsibility that you have for that statement. Otherwise, bro, you're yeah. so wrong. It's the easiest thing in the world. Just put camera in front of me and let me record and TikTok a billion. Oh, views. I guess what? And then when everybody's mad and upset, that's just engagement. That's engagement. The engagement, exactly. Oh, the yeah. haters. All yeah, the haters yeah. out there, yeah. whatever. So yeah. that's the problem. Only the people who know the sunnah, understand the weight of knowledge, will recognize the restrictions they should have on themselves. That they're, they're wary about that, about uh, sending out answers. And sometimes they find it actually so difficult. Like when I used to do the, 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 the faith IQ, and yeah. now I want to do it right now, I, as you know, I'm speaking at 76 million miles an hour <laughs> because of all the caveats. You turned every Faith IQ video into like six minutes. It, like, exactly, right? I mean, it's meant to be a two-minute thing. I'm like, bro, I've got to make sure that I give the full behavior so that everyone understands that this is caveated from this angle. There's nuance from that point of view that, you know, so, not, so one person just doesn't hear one statement and they run with that and turn it into the global answer, a, 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 a response that where I'm actually in the answer telling that this could be applied in many different ways, but for you, so it's it, it I just, really I just is realized that you are protecting yourself with all of that, trying to put it. <laughs> in, in I told you, so bro. Like, and, and that's why, by the way, that's why you famously are unclippable because you don't stop talking for a second. And the reason why you do that is that they don't clip you. I see that. No, this is I'll, chess. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell I'll tell you something, right? I've always told folks that forget clips. You know these. You know in the classes they have the gem board. Yeah. I go, there's no, put, take the gem board away because my, from beginning to the next 50 is all going to be gems. You're not going to have one second to stop. So don't be trying to say that I was able to pull out gem this, gem that. No, 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 no gems here. These are all dangerous, this whole, this whole game. It really is on a serious note where people try to find uh, clips and it's, it's uh, ironic because uh, uh, someone tried to do a clip from uh, a class that I did the other day and I looked at the clip and I said, how rubbish is this? 
Mm. I said, actually, yani, how literally rubbish it is. And you can see that the person has tried so hard out of this brrr lesson of one hour to find something. And that was the best thing that they found. And actually, it's like nothing, right? It's like something which is taken in the middle and they're hoping that, yeah, this will spread some kind of benefit. Like I said, folks that 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 uh, are aware of themselves and the responsibility of knowledge will not be so quick to worry about what can be clippable, what can be shared, what I can send to other folks, what I can promote myself with. What they will be concerned about is to develop themselves in the safest way, in the most beneficial way, in which all of the effort that they put in becomes a blessing for them and not a curse. A blessing for them and not a curse. And I, I'll say this, I'll say this. The Prophet Sallallahu when he... Because I don't, you know, I also don't want to make it so scary that nobody even, even tries it. But yep. the Prophet said that, okay, uh, that the, 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 the dunya is completely cursed. Mal'oonuna ma fiha. It is, uh, everything which is in it is 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 cursed, except for the dhikr of Allah, all the alim, all the muta'allim. So we're talking now, um, that only three things escape this curse of this dunya. The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the teacher and the student. And if you're not engaged in one of these three, and in particular, you're trying to hold a position between the, the last two. So you're neither a teacher and you're neither a student, but you're this casual kind of, you know, use whatever little bit that you get here and there. That sounds great. That sounds wonderful. That sounds thingy. Let me just share it here. Let me just share it there. It's just a massive industry. It's a massive industry and even people might not be financially benefiting from it, but they're playing their part in which all they do is share, 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 share. But if they actually thought about some of that stuff themselves, if they actually spent less a few days off of social media and put that into the memorization of the Quran, if they actually did something that will benefit them, as opposed to this idea that just putting on their stories, this quote, this quote, this screenshot, this screen grab, this video, just again, 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 and not actually moving on from there and taking accountability for their own time, this is a disaster. And we have to, we have to, we have to step in and say, guys, listen, discipline yourselves, adopt a program, adopt a teacher, get through something so that your foundations are solid. And then you can start then choosing the other routes that are open to you. And if it, Allah has written for you that you're going to be some big social media superstar, then if you deserve it, then Allah will give you that. But I tell you something, man, there are a hundred other professions you'd rather take than being that person. I'll tell you that too. So, Sheikh, you you mentioned uh, finding a course of study. Um, I do want to talk quickly about the courses that you teach with Faith Essentials, and 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 you mentioned that you don't want to make it too scary, which is perfect because that is part of what scares people when they go online and they're looking at courses. Fiqh of Salah. You go on YouTube, you'll find forty videos. Your Fiqh of Salah that you teach with Al Maghrib, I think, is you know some. I think the the estimate is you know one thousand hours, maybe one, maybe two hundred thousand. We don't know, but it's a lot. So you teaching the fiqh of salat in the faith essentials portal, I think it's maybe two hours or something like that, which is incredibly condensed. But that's the that's the that's the the tried and true method of introductory texts, right? When you study a metan, it's a it's just a number of pages. The way that people historically, you know, uh, learn different sciences that they'd read uh, a very condensed essay on that topic and so you teach the fiqh of salah in the portal uh very condensed you don't go into the differences of opinion you tell people what they need to know what exactly they need to know of the fiqh of salah fiqh of tahara you also teach you also teach money matters which is the fiqh of transactions how many times do people buy and sell in a day and they don't know what they're doing they don't know what type of sales transactions are permissible that's it's very important you also teach uh protect this house or the the fiqh of family as well uh, and the fiqh of zakat as well. You know, the fiqh of zakat is amazing to me because I was, it, it's so interesting how people are aware of Ramadan. They they learn the fiqh of Ramadan. Obviously, people are aware of salah to some degree. They know the fiqh of, of salah. And, and, and then you have righteous people, people who grew up in the masjid. They go to school and then they get jobs. And then recently one brother I was, you know, he was talking to me about his portfolio, mashallah. And he, you know, he trusted me enough that he actually even showed me his portfolio. And it was a lot of money, mashallah, to walk a lot. And then I, I said to him, you know, did you pay zakah on it? And he was like, like he completely forgot, like he, for years, because zakah is so private and it's so individual and, it, and it's not a communal activity. It almost like it slips through the cracks. And so the fiqh of zakah 
which is obligatory. It's a pillar of Islam, not just obligatory. It's a pillar. Like all of these things you'll find in the Faith Essentials portal. You find it condensed and you find it complete. You can watch it in two hours. The app is very, very accessible. I love putting it on 1.5 speed. You're not going to be able to put Sheikh Abu Isa on 1.5 speed, but other people as well. Sheikh YQ teaches pillars of faith. One of the things we did with Faith Essentials is that we made we're not just throwing courses together that people, you know, are interested in, meaning the instructors are interested in teaching because that's a lot. Then it would be a portal filled with 200 seminars or courses. But instead we looked at what are the things that a Muslim needs to know? And so we've got the courses that Sheikh Abu Isa teaches because all of these are fiqh courses that a person needs to know. We have pillars of Iman, we have interactions. And uh, Sheikh, if you could just speak to this idea of the importance of completion, the importance of structure, the importance of completion and the importance of structure in your learning. Uh, absolutely. And uh, I'll speak to that. And I'll tell you why, because a lot of people might think that this is the one guy who doesn't care about completion whatsoever, because I'm currently teaching that fiqh of salah currently in a, in a project which I reckon might take 20 years. Right. I've already yeah. been on it for the last six years, logical progression, which is also part of Al Maghrib's family of, of offerings, right? Yeah. And uh, it, this is the perfect uh, example. So, you, as uh, Sheikh Ahmad just mentioned, the Fiqh Salah class that came out, I think, earlier this year it was, right? Mm -hmm. Fantastic uh, class, production, whatever, complete from A to Z. And it's like about 50 videos or whatever outside, inside, studio, under whatever. That's a lot. That's a proper, you know, you go through that, you've got as good a grounding in Salah as it gets. But I don't have 50 hours. I need to be able to know whatever. So I'm going to go back to TikTok. I'm saying, no, 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 no. You're not going back to TikTok. You're not going back to Instagram. You're not going back to YouTube. I will go and I will record you against all of my sensitivities in the whole world. I yeah. will give you a couple of hours for you to condense that. And I'll take out, I'll strip out all of the differences and this and that, whatever, as you just said, and I'll tell you the key rulings in Zakat. I'll tell you the key issues in the fiqh of death, for example. I'll tell you the key rulings in the fiqh of salah because completion is more important than committing yourself to a, a, a 60 hours. And for those folks that have got the time and do want to go into the differences and details, whatever, then I'll give you the 20 year project. And that's actually available all the time. So these different projects are according my point is, is I don't I'm not attacking people studying in a short period of time. I'm not attacking the people who are studying in a long period of time. I'm attacking people who don't believe that they shouldn't study within a system. That's who I'm attacking. Mm. You've got to do something properly. So I don't mind you going, you know, for example, there are some scholars that have got their entire program uh, or the entire like Sheikh Ahsan Hani, for example. You go to the it's not used YouTube uh, 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 channel and you'll see from beginning to end, everything is there. So it's not me attacking YouTube videos. If you go and start from the first playlist and you make your way through all of those videos in that order, you've done a fantastic thing. You've got to be able to have the discipline to approach. And obviously, Faith Essentials makes it easy for you because unfortunately, I have to say that folks just want to be spoon-fed. And at some point, we realized, and it was difficult for us. I mean, for me, we have that level of arrogance. We have that level of, you listen, I went through it. Why can't you go through it? And, you know, you are all weak and snowflakes and all that kind of thing. And, you know, it, it's it's in, built in us, in, in, our, in our culture, that we find this difficult to overcome. But I, I overcame it. I realized that, you know what? Time has changed. People are different. They don't have the same attention span. And they need things in a short uh, format. So as long as it's authentic, clear, summarized, but most important, in methodology and complete, then it's going to benefit them. And that's, alhamdulillah, what we're able to do. And Faith Essentials is clearly a great platform for that. And I'm sure that that anybody that has uh, experienced it will be able... Listen, is it the most detailed thing in the whole universe? No. But is it is it more detailed and beneficial than the videos that you're watching? 100%. Of course it is. Of course it is. It would be a ab if it wasn't. Um, and I just wanted to mention something on the account that you you, you said. If people really understood just how weak we are on zakat and how it's applicable to us all the time, like just the other day, I had to pay zakat, right? And I had to be aware of this. I had to be aware of my own investment portfolio and aware of sometimes not even my own actions, but the fact that the portal sold some of my shares without my uh, knowledge because they need to have fees to be paid because of the account. 
and sometimes they leave so little cash because why would they leave cash lying alone it should be invested that they will sell it and they might sell a certain unit that would allow some certain cash to go in and they take that their, their, theirs out but what's happened is that a stock has been sold that you had no intention for selling for donkey's years therefore no zakat upon it according to what i teach but when it's sold you have to pay zakat upon it there are people that are sitting there so unaware of the obligations and as you said the pillar that is zakat upon them and even this fundamental knowledge that most people don't know this will be something that is taught in at the basic faith essentials level right so when you think and when you consider the resources of the platform and the scholars and teachers that are there yeah alhamdulillah so it's a wonderful initiative i'm sure that the, the bigger initiative is more important that people recognize discipline there is not what comes quick goes quick and people who are just going to treat this in a in a lackadaisical way are not going to develop themselves they're not going to develop themselves and that's something which is important Allahu and i and i and i think Sheikh, you're talking about discipline i think one of the things that faith essentials you know helps and for sure is the idea of community so you have you do have live sessions, you have the recordings for sure, but every month we have a, a live series. We have an instructor who comes and teaches, um, and Maghrib instructors are sometimes their guests, but you always have teachers that you can interact with. We also have instructors who are in a, a, a student group chat for people's questions. And then you have the the, the student base itself. They're all, uh, you know, they're, they're seeing each other on these lives, they're interacting with each other in the group chat. And so you get that sense of community, that sense of family, which for some people is exactly what they need. They need that encouragement. They need that crowd, that bubble that's moving together. And at the same time, you have those who are, you know, have that discipline to just completely study at a self-paced level without any assistance needed. So we have both of those. And then there are recordings, of course, available. We have uh, over 14 instructors, but what I want to do really quickly if I can share my screen is I want to show people the portal because I'm very proud of this portal. Alhamdulillah, we did a, a fantastic job with it. If I'm allowed to say that myself, even though I wasn't involved in the design of it, but um, I am involved when it comes to sharing feedback. So here we go. I'm going to log in. Hopefully it automatically logs in. Yes, it did. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. So when you come in, you have the library here. Immediately, you have recordings, you have playlists. And if you haven't downloaded the app, please download the app. The app is wonderful, alhamdulillah. It's very, very easy. And so you have Sheikh Abu Isa teaching family life. You have Sheikh Sa'ad Asim teaching the fiqh of clothing. You have Sheikh Abu Isa teaching the fiqh of death. I didn't mention the fiqh of death earlier with your offerings, Sheikh, but I really believe that this class by itself is worth the subscription because there is nothing that is more intense than losing a loved one. And at that point in time, you have questions because people prepare for weddings and they don't prepare for funerals. And then at that moment in time, you want to be able to immediately go through. And I remember this, subhanAllah, I remember this particular class with a friend of mine, two dear friends of mine, one of their brothers, he died in a car crash immediately. And so subhanAllah, uh, the other brother, was with him with the fiqh of death binder. And he and they were going and knocking out everything that needed to be knocked out from the ghusl to the burial to the, you know, they were leading their entire family. And so having this course and you have it for an entire year, um, inshallah ta'ala, depending on the subscription that you get, but having it in access is something that's very, very crucial. Fiqh of da'a and dhikr with Shaykh Walid Musyuni, fiqh of entertainment. You have Shaykh Abu Isa here with the fiqh of prayer, fiqh of marriage and divorce to Shaykh Yasir Qadi. So it's an, it's a, it's an amazing lineup. And again, these are only these are short lessons. You have, for example, let's 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 go to let's see the fiqh of prayer here with Sheikh Abu Isa. I just taught mindful salah in New York City. And of course, the vast majority of the questions people had for me was prayer. And the most popular question that keeps coming is how to pray sujud as sahu, how to pray the and how to make up mistakes in prayer. And so I think it's somewhere here, errors in the prayer. So you just go immediately to errors in the prayer. You find Sheikh Abu Isa teaching it in 13 minutes, which is for him. That's like an Olympic record. Mashallah. I'm telling you. I'm telling yeah. you. So you find him. You got the demonstration. You know, you have beautiful video. You can watch it on high speed if you want. You've got different qualities of, of uh, different qualities of, of video, depending on your internet capacity and all of that type of stuff. So everything is accounted for. And you have little notes as well that you can easily access, alhamdulillah. So this is the Faith Essentials portal. You have playlists, you have things for new Muslims, and then you have access to the lives. All of that is included in the dashboard. 
So with that, I'm just going to stop the share here. To be honest, with it's pretty that, sick, you know. I forgot how sick it actually was, you know. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, it's a great portal. It's a great portal, alhamdulillah. Like, I, I'm, I'm very proud of Faith Essentials. When people, whenever people ask me, where is the best place for me to get access to things? I'm like, have you downloaded Faith Essentials yet? It's a great starting point for anybody who's interested in starting to study Islam, inshallah ta'ala. Or at least, maybe they have been studying Islam, but they've been studying Islam, like Sheikh Abu Isa mentioned, it's without structure, it's kind of all over the place. Here you can see, you got Usul al-Fiqh. We have Usul al-Fiqh in the in the course in the in the portal, so you can cover the most important subjects that a Muslim needs to know, to the detail that a Muslim needs to know. Inshallah Taala. So, with that, I'm going to give Sheikh Abu Isa final uh, the final stage. But what I do want to mention is that we have a special. We have a special, a seven day special. Okay, so if you go to faithessentials.online forward slash special, that's the link. It's in the description of the video, but faithessentials.online forward slash special. Make sure that you go to that and make sure that you go to it today and you share it with other people. And inshallah ta'ala, you'll be able to access Faith Essentials for free, inshallah ta'ala, for seven days. Um, Sheikh Abu Isa kind of paints people as, uh, uh, as people who would try to consume the material for seven days. Uh, and then sign off afterwards. But I don't believe people will do that. I believe that people are going to stay, inshallah ta'ala, after as soon as you, you log you on. Do, and if you do do that, I want to give you, be the first to give you my salams. You are a legit pack. <laughs> I, I, I will doff my cap to you, sir. <laughs> if that person camps out and watches every video. <laughs> legend guy. Legend guy. Sick guy. <laughs> seven days. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you'll get access to it, inshallah ta'ala, for free for seven days. So download it, share with other people, inshallah ta'ala, create a welcoming party, and we'll see you, inshallah ta'ala, inside the portal. And then I I, I, I hand off, inshallah ta'ala, the mic to Sheikh Abu Isa to the end. Wallahi, I don't know why you hand it off to me. You did it great there, man. You just now brought the whole thing to a, you know, wasn't, it wasn't. Wasn't very smooth move that bro. You should just stand in mashallah say all the way. But I, I I guess if I'm gonna say something, I'll say this. What I do want, Sheikh, is I do want from you a, a two hour conversation. We have to continue this. I I wanna I wanna do it some other time, inshallah. Right. Yeah. We'll do it for the Maghrib okay. YouTube. We'll catch you somewhere. Maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, well, let's see. Um what I'll say is this is um what 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 always kind of um I don't know what the right word is, but what always kind of, I don't want to say irritates me or annoys me or, or surprises me is how folks are so, so on it when it comes to sharing quotes about, you know, get done today, what you, you know, don't leave till tomorrow, what you can get done today and, you know, structure and discipline and motivational quotes, whatever. But when it comes to their own dean, they don't seem to have that att attitude. It's just the height of hypocrisy, obviously, but it's also embarrassing. Yeah, and yeah. because the thing is far more important, right? So I would just say that uh, there is nothing that you've heard in this one hour that is new. Everything that you've heard is something which you know yourself because many of you will be parents. You'll be telling your kids the same thing. You don't, you don't you know, tell your kids, right, you know what? Here's a, a book here. Have a look at a page there. Have a look at a page there. But you know that you choose the appropriate books in an appropriate system. And the kids turn around and say, we don't like this. We don't like that. And then you say, yeah, OK, well, then you can go through all the way until uh, high school and college just doing art, for example, because that's the only thing you like to do is drawing. But you insist that they know they have to do maths, even though they don't see the benefit for it, even though they don't see the reason for it. This is a basic principle in life. We all know it. We apply it with every single person around us. We apply it in our work. Why are we not doing that to ourselves in our deen, the most important uh, aspect of life? So I would encourage folks to take their deen seriously. And by that, I don't mean just put yourself practicing because you wake up and pray and you infer you don't miss it, but that you that you uh, uh, approach the obligation of seeking knowledge in the way that is obligated to do, which is properly, according to the sunnah, according to the way of the sahaba. I've took, taken so many, not used a single quote from the companions and how they used to approach the Quran that they never used to go forward yeah, in an eye, except that they would implement it first. And then, and today are people are like, I want to get the eye and tell everybody about it. You look yeah. at the difference of the prophetic generation and our generation, Allah Musta'an. But anyway, check out Faith Essentials. It's, uh, by the way, a lot better and a lot more packed than when I checked last time. 
Jeff, it gets better every time. In fact, we're going to need you to record a few more series. We'll be on oh, the phone. Easy soon. tiger, easy tiger. All right. <laughs> slow down now, slow All down. Right, everybody. <laughs> everybody, I forgot to mention just in closing that I actually have a Faith Essentials live series that I'm doing, inshallah ta'ala. Next week, we'll be, start, we'll be starting, inshallah ta'ala. So make sure that you join. Uh, it's going to be called you turn to a, a U-Turn to God. So we'll be studying the fiqh of Tawbah, inshallah, from Ibn al-Qayyim's Madari Jassadiqi. And he has a huge section on Toba, really, really beautiful. And so we'll be we'll be discussing such an important topic, such an important aspect of the deen, which is to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after making a mistake and knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. So we'll be starting that live series, inshallah ta'ala, until we're able to secure Shaykh Abu Isa for a live series very, very soon. Otherwise, Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much, Shaykh Abu Isa. Thank you, Hafsa, for being on the one and twos in the background. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you all. And for everybody listening, Jazakumullah khair. We'll see you in the Faith Essentials portal very, very soon, inshallah.